always have to thank our annual sponsors. So these are the sponsors that pay for all year for all of us to be here and subsidize. Your membership helps, but uh, that just subsidizes it. And these big sponsors pick up uh, a lot of the tabs. So we really do appreciate what they do for us. And then particularly, we have a sponsor for each meeting. Uh, tonight is Verima, and they're tonight's meeting sponsor for April. So thank you very much, Verima. How about a clap for Verima? Real dollars and real money that these folks put out, so we do, do appreciate it. Uh, moving right along to the uh, Startup Corner. So as you know, every month we try to give focus um, to a startup here in Atlanta, and that's one of the big uh, premises of the Waters Technology Forum. We do have a lot of great big household names in Atlanta, but we do try to promote uh, startups and building Atlanta as a wireless community. So to that end, we have a pitch every month where we have uh, one of the hottest mobile companies in Atlanta, come and give a pitch. You, a couple things of criteria, in case you know somebody that might want to come and have their two minutes of fame here at the Wireless Technology Forum. They've got to be a member. They've got to be pre-venture funding. Uh, that's where you go to register. You can see the, the URL. And then we have some sponsors, Atlanta Technology Angels and 151 Locus, who'd help us do some screening and, um, and bring us candidates to go ahead. And after you register, they'll evaluate the candidates, and we let them tell us who, we think good, who they think good candidates are. So we've got a pretty good one for you tonight. And we're going to jump right into that. So tonight, remember I said cycle. So tonight we have uh, Via Cycle, and with that we have Kyle, who's going to come on up. Go ahead, Kyle. He's the CEO and uh, co-founder, and uh, I've seen the pitch, I've seen the slides, and I think it's uh, pretty interesting. I'm a biker myself, All right. a road biker, so I would love to come down whenever you get this, uh, and I want to be your first customer and take one of these bikes out. So. Well, you can take a ride now. I can take a ride now? See, I did, that's what I didn't know. I'm looking forward to work in, in downtown right now. Uh, on Tex Campus. On Tex Campus. I'm going to try that out. So. If you'd like to use the arrow key or the clicker, okay. that would be great. Try to stay close to the mic here first, and they're going to get you on camera. And you've got, as we talked about, two minutes. All right. I'll give you the signal. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Kyle Azevedo, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of ViaCycle. ViaCycle makes it easier for you to get around your campus or neighborhood. We set up bikes in cities and universities so that you can rent one instantly using nothing more than your cell phone. In a nutshell, we're Zipcar, but with bicycles. Now, a lot of people ask us, why bikes? But the fact is that bike sharing offers more impact per dollar of investment than any other form of transportation. Our team's been working on bike sharing for the past three years, and along the way, we've developed a unique business model from scratch earned over $87,000 in research in funding and grants. And more recently, we won the MIT Clean Energy Prize in Transportation and Startup Riot 2012 right here in Atlanta. So in short, we know how to make bike sharing effective and we know that it can work. The problem with existing bike sharing systems is that they're designed and built as large infrastructure projects. So they take an incredible amount of money to get up and running. And they're hard to keep running. Now, we decided to solve this problem by redesigning bike sharing from the ground up to make it inexpensive, scalable, and adaptable. What we did was we put an electronic lock on each bike and gave it GPS and, and data communications. And we also built a platform to manage these bicycles. The end result is about 75% less expensive than our competition, but it works almost exactly the same way, and it requires no infrastructure whatsoever. Behind the scenes, ViaCycle offers a complete system for managing this hardware from the cloud. We collect data from these bikes at all times so we know who's using them, where they are, and whether they need attention. As an end result, our customers can configure and run these programs from anywhere and change things on the fly, which ends up saving them money. Better yet, this technology already exists. So these pictures that you're looking at are from our Georgia Tech program. We have 40 bikes up and running on the main campus. We have over 500 registered users in four months of operation, and the program's doing incredibly well. We're also looking for wireless partners to help us build our technology as we move to more and more customized devices. So if any of you are interested in talking and learning more, uh, I would love to speak with you afterwards. Thank you very much. Nice. 
And now moving on to tonight's, uh, tonight's topic. Uh, Maury is going to be our, uh, our moderator, and I'm pretty interested in this topic because, uh, you know, Angry Birds and, and uh, Instagram get all the, the excitement and money, but where actually the real work happens is uh, enterprise apps, right? That's the, it's not as glorious and sexy, but that's where the real work done, gets done, and that's where the money is for the enterprises. I think that's what Mario's going to take us through tonight, of how that works, and um, we've got some great panels, and he'll, he'll introduce you to those folks. So most of you know Mari. He's a past president and uh, also one of the uh, co-founders co of the Atlanta BlackBerry Group and the past president also one of the co-founders of this very group, so he's no, no stranger. You've seen him up here many times. So, Marty, why don't you come on up, introduce your panel, and take us through. Thank you, Merle. Thank you so much. Thanks, Merrill. Appreciate that. So with that, I'd like to introduce our panel. So on my right um, and your left is, um, from, from left to right, is Hayden Eastman. He's a senior technical architect and Southeast software specialist for Motorola Solutions. And recently in 2011, Motorola acquired Row Mobile. It's a, a MEEP, and that's what we're here to talk about tonight. One of the things is, is what is a MEEP? He's an electronics and software engineer for over 20 years. Hayden's a holder of a number of patents in mobility electronics. He's also Motorola Solutions Southeast specialist for the Row Mobile suite of development tools. At the other end, uh, on the other side is George Machini. George is the president and CEO of Catavolt. You might recognize George because several months ago he was right here as our startup corner, and uh, we asked him to come on the panel tonight. George is leading the way for the creation of a new category of enterprise mobility solutions, and I, I won't steal his thunder for that, but Catavolt uh, thought they were a MEEP, and then Gardner told them they're not a MEEP. So uh, George is going to fill you in on that. Um, part of, prior to Catavolt, uh, George was part of a core management team at Paragon Systems International, an Atlanta-based spinoff from IBM that was purchased by N4 in 2005. And then lastly, in the middle, we have Lee Wagner, who I've known Lee for a long time since his days at ENCODE, and uh, Lee leads the um, mobility software services solutions, I knew I could get through that, and design group, he's probably got the biggest business card in the room, but um, for mobility for AT&T mobility. He has over 17 years in the mobility solutions space. Um, it, it, his experiences are not limited to, but it, you know, such things as enterprise mobile applications, meet platform, business to consumer, mobile web applications, machine to machine, mobile security, and various location-based applications. Prior to joining AT&T through acquisition of his company, God, I really feel bad up here that I haven't been acquired by anybody, but um, Mr. Wagner was the president and CEO of ENCODE uh, Wireless, a leading privately owned wireless business and technology systems integration and consulting firm. So welcome our panel tonight. I'm going to start off and ask Hayden, Hayden, can you tell us what a MEEP is for those people in the room that uh, don't know what the alphabet soup is so we can get this discussion started? Sure thing. Uh, is this, okay. Um, so as, uh, as Maury says, I'm, I, I work with uh, Motorola. And Motorola, uh, you guys may know, is in the business of rugged handheld computers. Some of, the, some of the other products that we, uh, we uh, work with are the two-way radios. So just about all the police and uh, firemen that you see out there carry Motorola radios. That's another area of our business. But uh, another area of our business that uh, a lot of folks aren't aware of is the uh, uh, cellular infrastructure. Right? Most of the uh, cell towers and the, uh, the communications equipment on those cell towers are, is Motorola equipment as well. But uh, beyond that, uh, I'll talk about uh, handheld computers for a second. That's kind of been our business. We've been uh, focused on rugged, rugged mobile computers in the enterprise for uh, umpteen years since from, uh, like Maury says, when we were back in, in the, the days of Symbol. And uh, so that's kind of where we spend a lot of our time, all right, is understanding what, uh, what goes on in the enterprise. Uh, Along that line, uh, just lately, you've, you've seen a lot of uh, uh, talk 
recently about uh, what, uh, what we'll call rich uh, internet applications. And what they are are applications that run on devices that communicate with some back-end cloud-based system. It basically takes the data off of that cloud-based system, displays it in some cool, rich uh, U UI on the device. And when uh, you talk about MEEPS, that's what, you, that's what we're talking about, is the platform that's used to develop those rich internet applications. Uh, a MEEP at, the, at the, its highest level uh, consists of probably three different things, I, I would say. And it, probably you ask all three of us here and we give you a different answer on it. But when I, say, when I think of MEEP, I think of uh, the ability to do cross-platform. So write your application one time, but target multiple devices. Uh, the second one is uh, data synchronization. Being able to uh, have that application run in a, an on offline fashion. If the, if the internet's not there, the application's still gonna function to some extent, right? Um, so those, those, you have, you have uh, uh, those two things as uh, be, being very important in, uh, in when you describe what a MEEP is. But at, the, at its highest level, it's a, uh, a mobile enterprise uh, application platform, and um, uh, it, it's really meant, it's, it's a, a new paradigm in, in uh, software development, is, is probably the best way I can put it. Thank you um, for that, Hayden. And the company I work for, uh, Pyramid Consulting, we are doing work with Row Mobile, and for example, we develop native code with it, and then we put it back through the system and it comes out with another operating system native code. So I'm oversimplifying a little bit, but that's, that's one of the real advantages of a MEEP. So George, Catavolt, you're not a MEEP, so what are you and what do you do and how, tell us. Uh, thanks, Mark. So a MEEP is something that helps you build applications and we're gonna need to build a lot of applications over the years. So they're great, because you don't wanna build them by hand. Uh, we do something a little bit different. When you go to the office and you use your, um, your systems, there's inventory, there's sales orders, there's all this great data that's out there um, that you'd love to get to from your mobile devices. But it's, it's all over the place, it's in a traditional data center. Uh, what we did that was different than a meet was uh, give you a cloud service that connects to your existing enterprise systems and makes them available from your mobile devices, all of them. And um, what's interesting about the market is we need everything because there's so much use for mobile. So as we go through some of the mobile scenarios, you'll see that sometimes you have to build applications. Other times you use something right off the shelf and you just download it. And then in, in certain other situations, there's a middle ground there. Great. So Lee, before I jump in and ask you a question, I just want to <clears throat> test the audience here for a second. Um, who thinks that uh, Apple has as of February 2012, Apple has the largest percentage share of the smartphone space in the United States. As an OS, or as, a brand? as an OS, yes, as an OS. Number of units sold in the marketplace. Okay, what about Android? Wow, we have a really smart audience here. So Android has uh, got about a 57% market share, according to Comscore, and um, Apple has about a 35% share. BlackBerry has dropped down to about a 7% share, and Microsoft is somewhere between 5 and 7%. So with that, Lee, I'd like to ask you, what are you seeing out in the marketplace in your travels? You know, what, what are some of the challenges that companies are facing with mobile application development? What kind of tools, you know, MEEPs, whatever are you seeing to, to combat this challenge? Wasn't that Hayden's question? Just no, sorry. No. No, um, so we're out in the marketplace and we, we see big and small enterprises. I think they're kind of three common themes. The, the first is no one can compete with the rate of change, right? The rate of change is greater than the capacity to deal with that rate of change. So you have to have something to be able to do it. And I think the second thing that's really important is you're, you're seeing uh, the need for different types of applications in the environment. It used to be fairly consistent where it was line of business, beat it, business to employee. Now you've got horizontal applications, you've got consumer applications. Sometimes a consumer application is a BDE application. Sometimes it can be used, this data can be used for both. So I think that the net of it is 
the change is moving extremely fast and you need something that's going to keep that pace of change with you because in everybody individually can't keep pace with the change, right? So you have to do that. And the second is the lines are blurring about what is the type of app out there and you need to be accommodating and flexible on how you deal with that, which creates the need for platforms, meet platforms, you can call them MCAPs and the consumer, but they're all platforms of some form or another that you need out there. And I'd say probably the last thing is uh, the thing that, that uh, happened with the internet kind of after the internet started was analytics. And I think whether it be your business to employee application or your, your, your business to consumer application, analytics and what you're pulling off the data and who's using it and how does that UI affect the usability of it and the UX, those things are people um, that are struggling with right now. So you, 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 uh, we have two clients that have changed their whole paradigm and they say, I'm gonna develop mobile first because it's the easiest to use and then I'm gonna retrofit that back to my internet application because then they'll be easier to use. So those would be the top three. So I'm going to open it up to the audience, and uh, please raise your hand. I'll bring the microphone over and just state your name and who you work for and ask your question. Hi, I'm Edie Kirkman with UPS. Um, looking at the landscape, especially with the new Windows Metro 8 interface. All right, Bob's got a question. Pick a stock. Ah. Oh, that'd be fun. Ah. If, you had to, if you had to pick a stock, Apple? Google or some startup named Microsoft, which one would you invest in today? That's a tough one. Um, I would not do Apple because I had a chance to buy them at forty dollars, and that was just be like, uh, I couldn't do it. Um, you know, I can't help but to think that Google is, is falling out of fashion uh, because they're, they're, I just don't, I don't see them the same way I saw them years ago. But I could see Microsoft staying about the same size for a long time. Sorry, Nero. Uh, so I think um, I think Google is probably a good a good bet. But my pick would be Microsoft. And um, Microsoft has a strategy right now. They're they're going after um, the embedded market, right? So you're going to see um, their operating systems in just about everything out there. So. I would, I would think uh, in, the, in the near future, you're going to see some good things out of Microsoft. Great. Interesting question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.